his obedience, imitation, in his tariqah, in his methodology, in his sunnah, the whole of the deen is protected and the whole of the world is protected, and the hereafter is protected for a person, every phase in this world and the hereafter is protected, there is no such thing in this world or the hereafter, which due to the Prophet Wasallam's imitation and obedience and following him, does not protect anything in this world and the hereafter. Storms, tragedies, jinnat, magic, enemies, calamities, disasters, every single example, illnesses, any negative cancer, kidney issues, well, as I said before, that 99% of, 99% of illnesses are not physical. These are all spiritual, inner state caused. That when a person within has jinnat and issues and jadu and magic and potions, and uh, these then become illnesses that physically are apparent from the body. And medically, if we see that one medicine, then another medicine, then another prescription, and then this injection, and then this has failed, this antibiotics failed, and this has gone wrong. Take any maqam, go on any stage, we cannot see that this is the, the final cure for this illness. Yes, the final cure will that be that way Allah Ta'ala gives His fadl, and He corrects that malady. Yes, either otherwise Panadol can uh, correct things, or Paracetamol can correct things, which are minor rather... If I go beyond, can I tell you something about a, a pious person? He said that if shifa was to be given by that, then I'll take something even easier than this. And he this Allah Ta'ala is the one who will give shifa. Cure. Subhanallah, this is the aqidah. Why? Because they knew in the aqidah, the atiur rasul that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, the whole dunya Allah Ta'ala has made it a killer, a castle, a fort for us. It's such a fort that Rasulullah's obedience and his lifestyle and following him, when a person has a life like this, he comes into such a food that nothing in the dunya can deliver harm to that individual. Nothing. No illness, issue, calamity, tragedy, nothing. The whole dunya stands on the other side. And if that individual is obeying the Prophet ﷺ, nothing can affect that person in a negative way. With ease, calm assurance. Hazrat Ali, karamallahu waj, uh, given us the, the preparation and the method to wipe away the sins. And a beautiful uh, arrangement has made that even if we sin to the level that the amount of sins fill up the gap between the heavens and the earth, and a person stood in Jahannam at that time, and how Allah has prepared for the ummah, Allah has given us such an action that it wipes away our sins. We say, subhanallah, subhanallah. What is that? What is that? Tawbah. Tawbah. That's it. When you took this point, therefore the only heart we say, Allah, forgive me. Allah says, go, I've forgiven you. That the list that was made, left side, all of the sins, the stack of sins that the, the angel was recording on the left, and 50, 60, 70 years he recorded, he did made books and sheets, and when Allah Ta'ala forgave, all of his efforts gone to waste. He said, Allah, I've recorded all of this, what's happening now? Within a second, everything's gone. And these now rewards are increasing. So is this not the kamal? Yeah, so how easy this is for us, isn't it? Very easy indeed. But one thing shall I tell you? That one sin of ours is such. Listen to this clearly. One sin of ours is such that it will not be cleaned or wiped due to anything else. It's, it's dirt and contamination is very deep and ingrained. May Allah Ta'ala forgive. May Allah Ta'ala not allow us to uh, carry out this sin. That do tawbah and rub your nose in the dirt. Let Laylatul Qadr come, Laylatul Mayraj come, whichever night comes. You can rub your nose in the, in the sand and the soil. But this sin will not allow us to be forgiven. You can pray tahajjud, do dhikr, recite Quran, do hajj upon hajj. But this sin will not be wiped away. Don't know with which ink this sin is recorded. It's such a severe sin, a bad sin. And if we realize that this sin is there, then we won't get the forgiveness. Look here, look at this point. But one action will allow this sin to be forgiven. Say subhanallah. So shall I tell you the deed that will allow this sin to be forgiven? One action can get this sin forgiven. Suddenly that sin will be wiped away. Otherwise that sin will continue, will be inscribed with a permanent marker and take us to Jahannam. And we do this sin so openly. So openly and abundantly and, and, and regularly that nobody is saved from this sin. But one action will wipe away this sin. Suddenly, which action wipes away this sin? One deed, and what is that? Sunnah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Practicing the sunnah will wipe away the sin. Only and only practicing the sunnah of Rasulullah sallam can wipe away and clean the sin. Otherwise, tawbah will not clean this sin. Stated Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood, the narrator, he said, from my sahaba, from my who's he addressing? 
to the Sahaba, to the arrangement that from my companions, if any individual, if any individual uh, that if he doesn't deliver my words to somebody else, I desire that when I am with you and I come to the majlis, then my heart should be, your heart should be clean, all of you pure, and there should be no contamination. What a great sunnah of Rasulullah This is sunnah, this is what we should do amal on, practice on. Then we can say that we are deserving of the rule for the sunnah. Do you understand? That, that we can say we can decorate our dahir with the sunnah and we will then be adorning it in a beautiful way. So look here. Now, do you understand the sin or we don't understand? Shall I explain it? Do you don't understand what I'm saying? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa stated to his companions radiallahu anhum that look, that any one of you that don't let me hear, my heart feels that when I'm amongst you and I sit amongst you, then my heart should not be, uh, for example, the heart should not be contaminated around me. What does this mean? What is the sin that Rasulullah is uh, hinting towards here? That because in the Akhirah, person's forgiveness will be based on the heart, the state of the heart. Why do we do dhikr? To clean the heart. Why do we read Quran? To clean the heart. Why do we do Hajj? To clean the heart. Why do we do Umrah? Why do we recite the Rood Sharif? To clean the heart. Isn't it? So what a big point here. So we should emphasize on the heart. But, but, the heart, how does a person contaminate the heart due to which we need to clean it? And this is ajib sin. This is ajib sin, a unique sin. That amongst us, this is a common trait, a common practice that has come about, a common sin that has come about, cropped up, is that we speak about one person to another person. We create differences in the hearts, that this person's like this, and we're not doing it for the sake of slandering or whatever may be, but we are delivering the communication of one person A to a person B. That he was speaking about you, he said this about you, he thinks this about you. So what happens every moment, this is continuing in our society circles. No Haji Sahib stop speaking wrong, no does an Umrah person stop, no does a Dhaqir or a Sufi or Molwi, nobody. Everyone's busy in these actions and this cycle continues. Look at three minutes stood here and we will definitely speak about other people. Despite the other person doesn't even know the person, a primary person doesn't know that what does he think about me, what does he feel about me, and to communicate about him, person A to person B, oh he thinks bad about you, he doesn't like you, and you'll leave the masjid, you'll say a few words, then he'll hint to the other person, oh you know he said this about you. He was speaking badly about you. To create the differences in the hearts amongst people. So in the other person's heart, then a negative arises due to the first person. And then without any reason, the enmity arises, and the enmity arises, and the differences arise, and homes and families are split, and relationships break, friendships break, divorces occur, children leave home. To this extent, the destruction spreads that a person cannot imagine. Why? Because a person created the difference between in the hearts of the people amongst each other. And the way to stop this, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is prescribed to us. Who told us? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If a person does amal on his sunnah, and what is the tariqah of his sunnah? That nobody should speak ill about one person to another. Nobody should speak negative about person A to person B. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said, that when you speak about another person in front of me, then my heart feels bad. This is the narration in this hadith. So what about us? Nabi Sallallahu said, I don't want that when I come amongst you, that you come and speak to me about another person negatively. Always I want that my heart and your hearts are clean and pure, and the hearts can remain pure when we have no bad feelings about another person in our hearts. Think bad, say bad, bad feelings. You will, isn't this happen? We'll go home and your wife will say something.